In late July 2020, a massive leak of Nintendo material spread out across the internet. Referred to as the Giga Leak, this was a boatload of over 30 years of source codes, graphics, assets, print material, and internal information released in multiple waves. By nature of this being internal data, an innumerable slew of the leak consisted of previously unpublished or unknown information, ranging from uncompressed and half-finished versions of known material to completely unused assets and previously unknown early iterations of famous games, all the way to internal emails and passwords, some of which. Were pretty humanizing, to say the least. The span of the leak was massive, confidential, and extremely tantalizing to longtime fans of the company. It was basically trivia overload, the holy grail for game historians and people just casually interested in all the bonkers stuff that was unearthed and published for the world to see. Within hours, this was all over the net. Everything, all of it, in so many waves that you needed live curators to even understand what was going on from the sidelines. And even then, you'd miss things while also being aware that there still was so much more coming. In other words, big news, but also big trouble. Nintendo and their lawyers would probably have a field day with this one, so some caution was exhibited. Maybe just look, but don't touch. Perhaps staying silent on the whole thing. Or what about starting a debate on ethics? Exciting. Look, we get that big-name news sites and media personalities likely need to act with caution around this, as they maintain business relations with Nintendo for review copies, interview opportunities, and what have you. Although, maybe they shouldn't. Reposting company secrets is probably not the best idea if you've already signed an NDA, and Nintendo probably have thousands of those contracts with people all around the world. However, it quickly became silly when sites like Spriter's Resource openly denounced any plan on posting newly excavated sprite sheets from the leaks, as that would be theft of intellectual property on a site that's literally just an archive of extracted and publicly distributed intellectual property. Wow! Holy shit! What a power move, guys! Hey, look! They even posted assets from the latest Paper Mario game, less than two weeks after release. Real clever, guys. Good work. Keep it ethical. But yes, obviously, spreading this stuff is technically illegal, at least in today's society. Perhaps primarily because there may be private or, in other ways, sensitive information buried in there. Trade secrets for games currently in development, or insight on how to breach online systems and compromise consumer data. People have speculated that the eShop hack earlier in the year was thanks to this leak, and regardless if that's true or not, it was absolutely a possibility that could have massive ramifications not only for Nintendo, but more importantly, for millions of unknowing customers. Sure hope you didn't save your credit card information in Nintendo's store. Just a friendly reminder. Come to think of it, don't trust any of these ghouls with your credit card at all, especially if they can't even make Super Smash Brothers run properly online. You actually have to pay for this. Value. At the end of the day, though, any potential talks on ethics of the case. 
is superfluous because that discussion ended the moment this leak went public. It's done. Cat's out of the bag. Pandora's box can never be closed again. There is no way to get this toothpaste back in the tube. This was a really bad idea. So back in 2003, photographer Kenneth Adelman intensively documented coastal erosion in California as part of the California Coastal Records Project. Among the literal thousands of aerial photographs displaying this rather non-exhilarating subject was one that showed American celebrity Barbara Streisand's mansion. Furious that this picture was public, Streisand sued Adelman for $50 million and demanded that the photograph would be taken down. The outcome was that the picture, which initially had only been downloaded six times, now became the hottest thing on the web, being seen by nearly half a million people, all thanks to Streisand's outrage. This came to be called the Streisand Effect in which an attempt to omit public information has the reverse outcome in incidentally increasing awareness and interest in the subject. So in practice, any attempt by Nintendo to suppress this leak will ultimately be futile, because that leak is already out there, existing, living on its own, leaking all over the place. It's been so heavily reported and spread around at this point that everyone with even an ounce of interest knows about it. But it is illegal, isn't it? Well, the initial collection and subsequent leak of the information was illegal. But the information in itself? Not so much, as you cannot be apprehended for knowing things you're not supposed to. Yet. What we're proposing is that the debate on ethics of opening Nintendo's closet instead should have been a philosophical look on what happens to that dirty laundry once it's out. Because what happens when secrets are no longer secret? Well, for one, they're not terribly good secrets, are they? <laughs> Information is an intangential abstract concept that our senses eat up like sponges, especially when applied to our reverse psychology of don't look at it. And that probably works tenfold when it applies to a beloved and nostalgia-driven company like Nintendo. It is simply too alluring to know that Luigi was indeed real in that game that shaped your freaking childhood. Nintendo can and probably should strike down whoever got their hands on this stuff in the first place. But for everyone else, that damage is already done. The Giga Leak information cannot be made forbidden, and neither can it be denied. This is now part of video game history and will fill up substantial holes that can help us understand the context and inner workings of some of the most important and influential works to the medium. That's just the way it is. To make an example, if you were now to write an article about the background and development of a game like the Super Nintendo classic Yoshi's Island, you would be running with intentional misinformation to not acknowledge what we now know about that game. The journey from some kind of Donkey Kong title to one where Yoshi carries a little wizard imp the fact that it initially had a title of Super Mario Bros. 5. That Mario would magically turn into an adult baby man, or that you would break the Geneva Convention for fun. This is the end. This leak allowed us to gain so much insight in the entire development cycle of the game that would never have surfaced otherwise. Things that not only changed the entire picture, but expands the canvas to a wall mural. Nintendo can't make that knowledge illegal, and neither should we as private people try to play pretend as their lawyers to suppress that information. We can't unsee it, so why not just embrace it and move forward? 
This was not the first time Nintendo secrets got leaked, and neither will it be the last. In fact, the reality that small bits and pieces have trickled out from Nintendo over the decades is the very reason that we've gotten previously unreleased games like Star Fox 2 or the localized Earthbound Beginnings. Because we knew they existed and were perfectly playable, Nintendo couldn't really deny the potential of giving them to us. But you should obviously know that they never would have done so had we not already known about their existence. Knowledge that only resulted thanks to old leaks that allowed us to play those games for years before Nintendo even considered giving them to us. And even then, in limited capacity. Now that we know so much more, maybe that also creates new expectations on what Nintendo not only could, but should do with their old stuff. There is undeniably a deep interest in these behind the scenes looks on old beloved classics, something companies like Rare and Sega have already embraced fully by extensively showing what was always beyond the curtain. Nintendo could learn that while finding the word fuck in the Zelda source code is a bit embarrassing, everyone would actually be really interested to know the internal evolution of one of their most beloved characters. Perhaps they could see the merit of gracing us with more tours of the Dream Factory. Or they start burning everything just like Square Enix did so the evidence is dead and gone forever. It would be one hell of a sight. And it is absolutely a possibility that game companies may start holding on to their development secrets even harder after this incident, potentially to the point of downright liquidating any leftover assets or documents related to a project by its completion. Anything to prevent things falling in the so-called wrong hands. The slight miracle of this entire situation does however stem from the realization of how much old data Nintendo truly saved. In a culture where old junk was thrown out way too prematurely, heavily affecting remasters and re-releases, it's impressive to see how Nintendo basically preserved everything. Everything. There were certainly rumors and murmurs of them having a rich archive, but seeing just a fragment of it in practice is awe-inspiring. They had this all along, even during periods when game preservation wasn't even a thing, and they were going to keep sitting on it. Forever. Without us ever getting to see it. And this makes us wonder if the question about ethics might have been angled in the wrong direction from the very beginning. Maybe we shouldn't be concerned about asking if little Billy is morally and ethically correct in viewing and sharing leaked sprites on the internet. Let's instead point the finger at the multi-billion dollar titan, Nintendo themselves, and their part in all of this. Because truly, isn't it more pressing to ask the question if big corporations are in some way ethically obligated to preserve their artistic works, not only internally, but also for the general public and for the future? These works can, after all, be considered historical objects of great cultural importance today, which arguably extends to the development in and of itself. As we all know, videos game are big business. Maybe Nintendo just sees their games as products. Probably. That is the casualty of art being commercialized after all. But the fact that Nintendo did keep all of this stuff neatly archived lends great credence to the suggestion that in the end they did see some great value in all of this information. It was important for them that this data would be preserved for the future. It wasn't just junk that they could discard willy-nilly. No, no, no. Not at all. It's well known that Nintendo reuses old discarded ideas all of the time, so for a lot of interns, perhaps this archive is more of a treasure chest of potential ideas. 
a brainstorm mood board for whatever outlandish undertaking they want to attempt. It could be that they are wary of these leaks helping competitors steal their ideas. Or they just think no one but themselves would find any of the contents interesting as they perceive it to merely be half-baked nonsense and boring smokes and mirrors for the real magic show. <coughs> Heck, it is possible they are not even aware of how much material they actually have here. Like for real, what if they just underestimate how interested people are in their archives? Because people are interested, really interested. And who can blame them? Nintendo has always been known for the high quality of their titles, how influential and important they have been to game design in general. A Nintendo game is usually polished to the point where revision after revision has been discarded to create the final product. And that development process is significantly intriguing to get a closer look at, which we rarely, if ever, get. Knowing the minute details of how a game like Super Mario 64 took shape during the development is more than just knowing how Super Mario 64 was made. It is a testament to how the fundamentals of a 3D platformer were explored and consequently set in stone. If we may be so grand, a lot of Nintendo games are basically the primordial soup of game design philosophies. Entire books, TV shows, documentaries, and even museums could probably be made out of the stuff Nintendo keeps behind closed doors. To hear about the secrets found in the Giga League with context and expertise from the actual developers would increase the knowledge and understanding of how one of the most beloved and important video game creators shaped the industry. And we think that is important, not just to feed the fans insatiable curiosity, but for video games to break free from their capitalist shackles by treating the medium as culture rather than commerce. And in that sense, we would propose that Nintendo should be expected, perhaps even ethically obligated, to preserve all of this for the world to see. That is not to say that Nintendo owes any of us personally, but on a wider spectrum, they owe it to culture to not let this information be lost in a dusty old vault for all eternity. Because how much can something actually be considered preservation if it is locked behind bars forever for no one to see? Shouldn't the works that these leaks pertain to be elevated beyond their status as mere products? If Nintendo truly valued their works, they would find it in their hearts to share them with everyone else who valued them just as much, if not more. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. Yeah! If you really liked this video, then there are more videos on our channel that you can watch right now. That's more. Yeah, awesome! And if you really, really liked all of those videos, well, then game will be to become a Patreon so we can make even more. And uh, special for this time is that we now have a little kitty cat. Her name is Jessica and she's adorable and you saw her in the video and from now on she's part of the gang. So if you pay us on Patreon, money will go to Jessica and her food. And as always we want to thank our current patrons who are Andrew Jones, Andreas Argulander, Aaron Rain, Andreas, Afayet, Bald Space Marine 33, Ben Clark, Ben has approved this message, Clara Rose, Biopanda, Botch Frivari, Casey Explosion, <laughs> Chloe, Cult of the Hyena, Ember, Emilulin, M. Rasa, Flynn Flamberge, Gage McCulgan, Gothic Garfield Huang Wu Isaac Abrahamsson Jerry Olsson 
Joel Nilsson, Karen Scholz, Iantu, Luke, Baba Kenzi, Magnus, Marby, Mattias Graman, Meow Mix 64, Best Game, Miko, Morgan, Nate Kiernan, Nischschwert, Oscar Funes Galindo, Preston Manes, Sweet Pink, Riley Rose Smith, Silly Rookie, Anonymous, Starfighter, That Yes, Tommy Håkansson, Trash Baby, Tough Emily, Vexelbun, and Saifi. And if you want to support us, you can go to patreon.com slash transparence. That's what pays the bills. <laughs> Feed Jessica. Feed the cat.